Today it's time for another little bit of circuit fun. This time, how to control a typical RC servo using an analog DC voltage. So we'll take a look and review how these typical servos operate and uh, show you the circuit I put together here that uh, allows you to control their position from simply a DC voltage. These remote control servos that are used in RC models all basically work the same way. They get a signal from a receiver that is pulse width modulated. The pulses are repeated between you know, every 30 to 50 times a second, or 30 to 50 hertz. And uh, the width of that pulse determines essentially whether the servo is fully counterclockwise, fully clockwise, or somewhere in between. And the range of this pulse width is just from 1 millisecond to 2 milliseconds. So the servo would be in its middle position at about a 1.5 millisecond pulse width, and then fully counterclockwise at 1 millisecond, fully clockwise at 2 milliseconds. So in order to control this servo with an analog voltage, we just need to devise a circuit that creates this pulse width modulated pulse stream where the pulse width varies with uh, a simple analog voltage. All right, so here's the approach that we're going to use. We'll create a circuit that builds this triangle wave at somewhere between 30 and 50 hertz in frequency. And you can certainly use a sawtooth wave as well, but a uh, triangle wave is easy to create. We'll take that along with a DC voltage that we can adjust and move up or down and apply both of those to the inputs of a comparator. And as we adjust this DC voltage up or down, we'll change the crossing point and thus change the output pulse width of the comparator. So the frequency is set by the frequency of our triangle wave and the pulse width is set by the level of this DC slicing voltage that is going into the comparator. Now here are those waveforms that we talked about right on the scope screen. So channel 1 here is the output of the comparator and then this is our obviously our triangle wave and our slicing voltage that are the inputs to the comparator. So we can see the output of the comparator is right where we're slicing the tip off of the triangle wave. And as I adjust this DC waveform up and down, it's not going to move very far, we can see how the pulse width is changing and for the wider pulse width the servo moves in that position for the narrower pulse width, the servo moves in this position here. So it's a fun little circuit. Uh, there's lots of ways of doing this. Uh, I chose to do it with just a bunch of rail-to-rail -rail op amps. A uh, nice little exercise in a couple of different ways that op amps can be used. And so here's the schematic of the circuit I built. I'll go over this at a high level, and then if you want to stick around, I'll go through each of the building blocks in a bit more detail. Uh, these two op amps up here uh, form the triangle wave generator. The, the triangle wave appears here. It's basically an integrator and a hysteresis comparator. And the way that basically works is that, say, when this out output of this comparator is low or sitting at ground, this is sitting at a reference voltage that's basically half of the supply voltage. So that's going to basically force a current okay, down in this direction through this resistor which basically sends a charging current into that capacitor which ramps that voltage up. And then uh, that ramps up to the point where eventually this comparator flips and changes state. When it changes state, this output goes high and then this voltage gets ramped down. And it keeps ramping down until this voltage goes low enough to flip that comparator again. So it's a, a simple oscillator with an integrator to create a triangle wave output. So the triangle wave output is fed into another comparator here, again just another one of those rail-to-rail -rail op amps. There's a little bit of positive feedback fed around this one as well to create a little bit of hysteresis to prevent any chattering uh, occurring at this output. And that is what goes out and forms the servo control. And the last bit of it is this op amp here, which is just a signal conditioner to take my 0 to 5 volt analog control voltage input and turn it into a small changing DC voltage that we're using to snip off the top of that uh, triangle wave to create our narrow pulse. Now I wanted to control the position of that servo with a 0 to 5 volt input. Now since we only had to move this voltage a very small amount, the first thing we do is attenuate that signal and just do that with a resistor divider. So a 0 to 5 volt change here is a much smaller 0 to smaller voltage change here. And we're just buffering that up you know, with a unity gain inverting buffer. So as this voltage goes up, this voltage comes down. These two resistors here are used to set 
an offset voltage. So we're taking this small zero to some small value DC voltage and DC offsetting that so it starts at some higher value and now moves slightly down. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the building blocks here. We'll first take a look at the triangle wave generator, which is composed of this hysteresis comparator and integrator. So the hysteresis comparator is basically a comparator with some positive feedback. And the effect of the positive feedback is to adjust the switching threshold based on the output. Uh, another name for this type of circuit is a Schmidt trigger. And uh, the way this works is this. Let's say we apply a reference voltage, in this case VCC over 2, to this input here. In order for the output to change state, this voltage has to go above or below that uh, voltage. So let's say the output is at ground. How far do we need to bring the input voltage up to cause this to go high? Well, we need to bring it up to the point where the voltage appearing here just exceeds VCC over 2. So if we know that's VCC over 2 here, this point's at ground, no current flows here, so this voltage obviously has to be above that VCC over 2. And the equation to determine that is simply right here. It's a simple resistor divider. So that upper switching threshold is VREF plus VREF times R1 over R2. Now similarly when we want to go down the other way, once we switch and this voltage goes high, now this switching threshold is going to move up. So this point will go to VCC. How far down below VCC do we need to go okay, in order to switch it down the other way? It's simply the same equation changing the sign. So we have essentially the switching threshold moving by you know, twice this amount. Uh, so that gives us a way of basically setting two switching thresholds uh, and that therefore it's going to basically in our case set the amplitude of the triangle wave generator. And I've got the equations that's kind of worked out here for, uh, for what I've got on the board and I'll make these documents available. Uh, check a link, I'll check for a link in the, uh, the show notes. So since the output of this rail-to-rail -rail comparator is going between the positive rail and ground, or VCC and ground, that's the input now to our integrator circuit. Now the integrator works uh, quite simply. Remember, no current flows in the input of an op-amp. So let's say that this, uh, this uh, non-inverting input is sitting at that same VREF, which is VCC over 2, and the input here coming from that comparator is sitting at ground. So that means that I'm going to have VCC over 2 and ground here, so some current's going to flow in that direction. Since no current flows here, that same fixed current flows in that capacitor. Now, fixed current flowing through a capacitor causes a linear change in voltage. Okay, and you can, that's determined by these equations here. Now, in our case, the voltage across this resistor is going to be VREF minus VIN, all right, divided by that resistor value, and what in our case is 68k ohms, okay, and that divided by the capacitance value gives us our slew rate in volts per second. All right, so a couple of other ways of drawing that equation. So if we want, in our case, about a 2 volt peak to peak sawtooth, that's about a 200 volt per second slew rate going up or down. All right, so we can just run some, run some numbers in here and pick some values. I happen to just grab a 0.22 microfarad capacitor out of my junk box, and from that calculated out about a 68k resistor would give us my slew rate that I would need so that I would run at about 200 volts per second, okay, and then it, given the switching thresholds we calculated over here, that would give us approximately a 2 volt peak to peak sawtooth. So you can play with the numbers here, just play with an experiment with some values, and the, this is what we came up with for the sawtooth oscillator. Okay, so we've got the sawtooth oscillator all sorted out. We've got a nice 2 volt peak to peak sawtooth running you know, between uh, you know, 30 and 50 hertz. The way it worked out on this one was about 42 hertz or so. And that's getting, you know, going to the input of this uh, comparator here. But let's take a look at these other building blocks down here. Okay, so I've got my signal conditioning and output comparator with a little bit of hysteresis. The sawtooth input is coming in here. There's that same kind of hysteresis. With these resistor values, I'm only going to get about 1% change in that switching threshold. I didn't really want it to move too much, but just enough so that when I was just crossing through, I didn't want this output to chatter. As soon as that output moves, it moves the threshold because it's a nice clean output. So this is kind of more of like a Schmidt trigger. So taking a look kind of at the, the top of my sawtooth waveform, you know, knowing that I've got about a 200 volt per second ramp rate, 
and knowing that I needed about a one millisecond you know pulse or a two millisecond pulse we we can figure out very simply that I need about a hundred millivolt change in that voltage to go between say one milli one millisecond and two millisecond in terms of pulse width so by input voltage I wanted to have a zero to five volt input you know coming into the control input here so I needed to attenuate that down to get down to you know near 100 millivolt change. Now I set up the divider so I get closer to about 150 millivolt change because I wanted to ensure that even with uh, power supply variations and resistor, you know, 5% resistor tolerance and things like that, that even if you built this, you'd, you'd easily be able to get down, you know, uh, get at least that one millisecond change in pulse width. So the, these numbers worked out fine and they're pretty common values. All right, we know that the, the peak value of the sawtooth wave is determined by that uh, hysteresis comparator on the previous slide to be about uh, V ref plus 3.9 over 10 times V ref, which was that voltage divider equation. So that kind of sets about where they, the top of this waveform is. And we know we needed to be about 100 millivolts below it, maybe a little bit less than that, and then want to be able to adjust a further 100 millivolts down. So we're going to take our attenuated value that's going from zero up to about 150 millivolts, and I want that to go in the opposite direction. So we go through an inverting amplifier. And I'm just going through inverting amplifier with um, you know, unity gain. I'm using relatively large values here of 100K, because they're large with respect to the voltages here, so it's not going to load this point down so much. So that's why I use some large values there. Now in order to set the DC offset, we're just establishing a DC voltage here. And in this case, I'm pulling off of that same VREF, okay, the resistor divider that we used on the first page, and that's uh, at VCC over 2. And I just found that you know, 100K and 220K with a little, little bit of math you know, gave me pretty close to what I needed to have in terms of an offset voltage to offset this voltage up so that it positions that uh, change right at the tip of our triangle wave. And some of this was calculation, some of it was just experimenting with different values on the board until I got the results that I wanted. So that essentially now, this signal conditioning circuit takes my 0 to 5 volt control signal and makes it the small uh, DC voltage or slicing voltage here at the input of the comparator that I'm feeding against the square wave or the triangle wave to give me the servo output. So we put all that together. Our uh, so, uh, sawtooth or triangle wave being built up of the integrator whose peak-to-peak -peak voltage is determined by these two resistor values whose frequency is essentially controlled by the slew rate controlled by those two component values and of course it's affected by the peak-to-peak -peak value that's going into the comparator our simple attenuator inverting amplifier DC offset level control circuit to create our slicing voltage to go to the servo control this V ref that you see here and here and here is simply coming from a voltage divider here. You see a lot of 3.9K resistors that I use in my designs. It's simply because I've got a pile of them. Literally, I've got uh, probably a few hundred of them in a bag. So I typically go and grab those because I've got a lot to play with. But the idea here was to use relatively low values so that all of the places that are connected to that uh, don't change or load down that voltage very much. Now I built this circuit up on a breadboard uh, with two rail to rail op amps. I used uh, some LM LMC 6482s because I have uh, a sleeve of them here. Uh, it's also available as a quad package, just a LM6484. Uh, nice little part, inexpensive, and uh, really nice uh, rail to rail performance. So, uh, so that's what I used here. The rest of it is just uh, discrete values, and I've got the probes going off to the scope. All right, so we can take a closer look at a couple of these waveforms again. You know, what we're looking at here is the uh, triangle waveform. We'll take a look at the output of the comparator, and we'll take a look at the output of my signal conditioning circuit where we're slicing that comparator. So that's the output of the comparator here. That's uh, the control pulse that's going to the servo. As I adjust my DC voltage, uh, we can see that as that voltage comes down, we slice this down further, we create a wider pulse width, or an hour pulse width. If we pan out here a little bit, uh, we can see uh, the I've got the old Simpson meter here on the analog DC voltage. So I can see as I turn the voltage up, what's going on as I turn it down. 
Uh, as I turn the voltage down, this voltage is raising up, making a narrower pulse width. As I turn the DC voltage up, that pulls this voltage down, creates a wider pulse width. So just a fun little circuit, a little fun with op amps, and uh, just a, an inter interesting way of showing how to control a uh, digitally pulse width modulated servo with an analog voltage. Again, thanks for watching.